Hello and welcome to another episode in our series, Our Digital Future, the innovative online programme covering the issues and promoting discussion around key topics in your industry and proudly brought to you by the Australian Information Industry Association. Our four new style episodes showcase the latest innovations, discuss challenges and solutions, and feature best practices from across the technology industry. Politicians and business leaders share their thoughts with us, as we also hear from the association's leadership, charting Australia's path towards our digital future. And it's a great opportunity for our future if we look at the way the technology can assist those industries to continue to grow and grow competitively globally. In this episode, we look at some of the latest technological developments driving the information industry forwards. There is no doubt that all industries and organisations need to move faster to meet changing expectations. Digital technology is part of the accelerating pace of business where speed has become a competitive advantage. As reporter Kim Skubris discovered, Rubicon Red helps organisations meet the challenge of real-time delivery while reducing costs and improving efficiency. Today, across industries worldwide, it's not enough for businesses to be good at what they do. They must also do it fast. So we live in the, the now economy. So as consumers, we expect things now. Um, that flows all the way up the supply chain. Rubicon Red helps organisations unlock their data and deliver in real time, in an efficient and cost-effective way. It's all about significantly reducing the friction in, in business interactions. So whether that's internally or with customers or suppliers or partners, um, underpinning all of this is essentially enabling the rapid flow of information inside an organisation and across corporate boundaries. More often than not, the challenge facing businesses isn't a lack of data. It's getting the right data to the right place at the right time to achieve the best result in real time. This can be through you know, real time, API driven integration, event based integration, just connecting all your applications, systems and devices um, together. Um, and also leveraging things such as, you know, AI and ML to automate a number of manual tasks. Rubicon Red um, provided a, a tremendous uh, acceleration to the founding of Pipe 17. We work with them on the initial uh, platform that we released, our dashboards, our, our connectivity solution around systems like NetSuite to be able to provide a, a complete solution uh, for our early adopters of, of Pipe 17 for connecting e-commerce systems. Software service company Pipe 17 recognises real-time is vital in e-commerce. Rubicon Red helped it provide a complete solution for early adopters of Pipe 17 to connect to e-commerce systems. It means a simpler and lower cost solution to meet the increasing demand, which has skyrocketed during the global pandemic. Consumers are expecting uh, immediate feedback. You want to be able to place an order. If, if your items are out of stock, you want to know that right now. You don't want to place the order and then get an email you know, the next day that says um, the, the goods are not available. So real time is, is you know, critical to e-commerce's success. Operating in real time is also a competitive advantage, driving customer satisfaction and developing trust. And once a customer trusts an organisation to efficiently deliver a good or a service, the more business they'll potentially do together. In the data-driven mining industry, working in real time brings both short and long-term benefits. With the capability of real-time um, data, some of our mining customers were able to improve the three key mining metrics. Safety, unit cost of production, and return on investment on their expensive assets. Real time ensures better use and longevity of mining assets and resources. Many of our mining customers have adopted automated trucks and equipment to run their mine operations. These automated machines produce a large amount of data if when harnessed properly and provided to the suppliers, these organizations can get proactive maintenance schedule from their suppliers, which when adopted, improves the 
life of these assets, which improves the bottom line of these organizations. As technology continues to rapidly redefine industry and the business landscape, Rubicon Red is rising to the challenge and assisting customers to successfully cross the Rubicon. They understand their business. We understand the technology. We come together as a single team and, and that's when the magic happens. Quick adoption and reaction is crucial if Australia is to be a leading technological nation. We'll also need investment in technology-based research and innovation and in strengthening the skills base of our workforce. AIIA CEO Ron Gauchi and Chair Rob Hillard discuss how we're positioned for our digital future and its challenges. The ICT industry plays a significant part across all of Australia's industries. The things that we're good at, whether it be agriculture, manufacturing, mining, sport, education, you name it, technology plays a significant part and at the heart of that is Australian technology and it's a great opportunity for our future if we look at the way that technology can assist those industries to continue to grow and grow competitively globally. The one thing we know for sure is that what got us to here isn't going to get us to there. Yet the world faces substantial challenges. Obviously, we've got the climate uh, crisis. But we're also having to look quite differently at how we produce food and agriculture for, uh, to feed the world into, into the future. And at the, at the very same time, uh, the expectations of skills are, ch are changing. Given the growth of our industry, and given the opportunities in it, and let's face it, digital skills are portable skills that you can take into any industry and any interest, and they're amongst the highest paying jobs in the country. That's why we need to encourage more people to pick up digital skills. We know that we need to come up with new approaches to supply chains, to transportation, to energy, to agriculture. And yeah, everywhere you look, there's innovative companies in Australia bringing new things to market and approaching them in new ways. As a country, we need to do more to help those companies to succeed, not just on an Australian stage with our population, but on a global stage. Spatial and land information is a vital tool for communities, businesses and government and is crucial for the development of tomorrow's Australian smart cities. Reporter Simon Reeve investigates the spatial digital twin, powerful emerging technology helping New South Wales lead the way when it comes to 3D and 4D infrastructure planning. There is a quiet, purposeful transformation happening across government, industry and in the community that's bringing fundamental change to the lives of people in New South Wales. Digital twin is at the heart of smart cities because it's essentially a laboratory where you can do all your digital modelling before you actually lay the foundations in, in the real environment. Meticulous data helped the New South Wales government navigate through the pandemic. Now data from the physical and built environment is charting the road to the future. There's no question that there is a big push at the moment around What's the, what's the way out of this pandemic? What's the economic and productivity st stimulus we can create? This is one of those things. This is one of the key things that I think will be critical to making sure we come out of this and speed up what we want to do in terms of recovery. It's becoming an integral part of our planning and it's something that, that we think will be what good governments do for interaction with their citizens and planning going forward. The IT to which Simon Hunter refers, is spatial digital twin, precision 3D modelling of the physical and built environment. The government says the sum total of these parts will help streamline services, inform decision making and reduce expenditure. So we'll check this out now and see if it's right to go for yeah. tomorrow. There may be no more vital role for spatial services than during extreme weather emergencies, increasing in number and scale. Over the past couple of years, we've obviously had huge fires and unprecedented floods. And we use this aircraft to capture imagery of those events, which then are used by emergency services to make decisions on the ground, um, how to support people in life or death situations. From the condition of the sandstone bricks at Fort Denison, the detailed contours of the majestic Blue Mountains, or new lighting for the Janolan Caves, 
Our world's being mapped and charted on all levels, but people are still at the centre of this picture. We are living in a technology age where data and information is key, but it's the human knowledge and how we actually are able to leverage and utilise the tools and the data to gain greater learnings, greater insights, create new products, create new services. There is another layer, history, that brings a four-dimensional element to this rich story. Take Penrith, just 17 years ago. I might uh, you take that back to 2004, so we can see actually how much has wow. changed. How many people have moved to the area? How many people, have this, or, or how land has been subdivided? It's not just cities and big population centres that stand to reap the benefits of spatial digital twin. It will also have a big impact on regional centres, like here in Bathurst, which will help bridge that city-country divide. We don't talk about smart cities, we talk about smart places, and that's to be inclusive of regional areas. And that's the advantage of the New South Wales Digital Twin. We are extending it out to the whole of New South Wales, so it won't just be for the, the built-up areas like your Sydney, Wollongongs and, and Newcastle. Indeed, Bathurst is the centre of the Department of Customer Services Spatial Service Universe, where vast amounts of data are processed every day, each piece being linked to a giant mosaic, soon to be available to millions of users. That's the way we try and do things always. We try and start small, prove the model, get it in the hands of customers. Those customers, again, being industry, government and citizens now as well, uh, get feedback, you know, improve, improve, improve and scale. So that's, that's the approach we always try and take and I think it's proving, proving that out with this, with this program as well. So Simon, is this literally the key to the door? It's fundamental. I don't think without the spatial digital twin, we could build the cities of the future that we need to and the places of the future that people expect. As Minister Victor Dominello mentioned in that story, digital technology is at the heart of our future smart cities and that means investing in the right infrastructure. Here's more from the Minister. Our digital infrastructure moving forward is critical. Think of the world that we live in. Think of what Zuckerberg said about the metaverse the other day, and, and this is just a glimpse into the future. If we don't have the data architecture, the digital play in place, then we will rapidly fall behind as a state and a nation. So I can't think of anything more important to future-proof us than getting this right. With digital, it, it's, not a, it's not a place or an area where you can just waltz along. You know, you've got to move at pace but you can only move at pace with trust. And that's why it's critical to so much of what we are doing here in New South Wales. Well, there's no doubt that Australia has challenges in this space and transformation is the key for us to be competitive globally. We asked sector leaders how confident they are about our digital evolution. Australia, if it's going to make the most of its opportunities in the world is, is needs to really put in place the right systems and processes to enable them to um, upskill uh, the workforce that it has to keep pace with change. I think that what we now see in Australia is a real drive and desire to, to A, recognise the problem, but also to start to take tangible steps to really move it forwards. We've got so much going for us. I think, and especially, I think if government can solve the puzzle about how it can become part of that competitiveness in a really meaningful way um, to, to work with industry because I think that when you look at the world at the moment, governments are trying to rein in things and control things for the public good but then again how do they accelerate the things that need accelerating. So I think, you know, I think we've got all the ingredients to make the cake, it's you know, can, can, we, can we do it, can we pull together and do it. In terms of the, the overarching trajectory, we, you know, we are, there is a, a real sort of understanding now uh, in Australia uh, that, um, that technology is, is a, has a real role to play in the future. It's not just a, you know, a cost centre for organisations. It's actually, you know, employs you know, more people than mining and it has a bit of, bigger impact to the GDP, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's a really important sector uh, in its own right. Uh, and, and that can only be a good thing uh, for uh, the future um, um, digital and, and digital transformation and the digital success uh, of Australia. I'm not fully confident. I think whilst we've got 
the talent, we've got the raw materials. It's how do we take that to the point where we can deliver? You know, we've we've got examples where we've done extremely well with companies like Atlassian, Afterpay and, and Canva. But how do we do that at scale? The biggest challenge in digital is around how do we align and collaborate around purpose and effort and actions and priorities. And I think if we can do that, the opportunity is huge. And that's all for this episode of Our Digital Future. Do keep an eye out for other episodes which look at future industry and innovation and the issues of privacy, security and transparency. We do hope you can join us. But for now, it's goodbye from the team and goodbye from me.